It is Apple update time. Let's go, I'm getting the cue, it's time to start. All right, uh, hey, what's up guys, Sam here. Welcome back to another video. Today, we got some leaked dates for Apple's March event according to some industry sources. This is really good news because while well, before we were speculating about a March event, we didn't actually know if it would for sure be happening. On top of that, we've got word that iPad Pro 2020 is in production. It should be launching in March alongside the brand new iPhone SE 2, probably being called the iPhone 9. And some other info about products that could be launching is as well. This is some great news. I'm personally excited, so I really think you should be excited as well. Drop a like if you're excited for this. Hit subscribe for more. I want to go over the dates, the rumors, and everything you need to know. So let's go ahead and my producers give me the okay. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. First off, an update on Apple's production in general. Obviously, uh, this is the first time I've talked about this, but the coronavirus is a pretty big issue over in China right now. Obviously, if you're going through it, it's a different story, but on the business side of things, there's been a pretty material impact there as well. Most of Apple's production happened in China. And because so many factories have been shut down, Apple actually today had to take a pretty drastic move. A couple weeks back, they issued guidance for the quarter telling investors how much, give or take a few billion, they expect to make. And apparently they're not going to be making as much because this is a bigger issue than Apple anticipated. In the short term, they actually go so far as to say iPhone supply worldwide is gonna be constrained, meaning that even though the iPhone 11 Pro or even like the iPhone 8 that's been out for a long time, they might not be as easy to get and they might sell out in some places just because supply is constrained because so many factories were shut down. They go on to say this is obviously only going to be short term, so don't think that like in a couple of months you still won't be able to get your hands on an iPhone 11, but Apple doing this is unprecedented. They've only done this like one other time before and it was when they were having a hard time selling iPhones in China like a year ago and then we had the whole like Apple is doomed sentiment. This is not the case now, but short term production is affected. And I don't say this to like totally overshadow the people whose lives are directly affected by the coronavirus. I'm not trying to sound like that at all. Obviously, it's very serious. Um, definitely like best wishes if you're going through that right now, but I wanted to cover sort of like the Apple side of the outbreak. Now, it's unclear as to whether or not this is directly related or possibly correlated in some way to the coronavirus outbreak, but I made a video a couple Couple days back about AirPods 3, talking about how the upgrade is not going to be substantial, but that it could possibly be coming somewhat soon. I also mentioned in that video that AirPods Pro Lite were referenced for the first time. Well, Digitimes has actually followed up with another report about AirPods Pro Lite today, and it gets a bit confusing. While still sticking to the AirPods Pro Lite naming scheme, which again, I and many others believe are just the next generation version of standard AirPods, they were apparently planned for a Q2 production and release release date. But now it doesn't seem like that's going to be happening anymore as they've been pushed back to sometime later in 2020. Perhaps most perplexing though is the fact that Digitimes also says that these AirPod Pro Lite headphones will be an entry level version of AirPods Pro, not saying that they're going to be the AirPods 3, not a new version of standard AirPods, but doubling down on the fact that these will be a variant of the Pro of some kind. I'm sure you can hear the confusion in my voice here because I feel like a version of in-ear AirPods without Pro features. I don't know if there's a place for that, but perhaps Apple was working on some mid-tier variant between normal AirPods and AirPods Pro, and this is the first we're hearing. So I just wanted to update you on that, which is really disappointing. I know AirPods 2 came out in March of 2020, and I was hoping maybe as a surprise, Apple would sneak in a black version or a new version of any kind for standard AirPods at the March event. But hearing this, it's not exactly looking too good. That being said, Apple products are still expected to be just around the corner, and both the iPhone 9 and iPad Pro 2020 are said to be in production now. We'd already heard that the iPhone 9 was coming around the March timeframe, and that it would not be delayed significantly, and we know it was said to be in production. But today we got a fresh report from Digitimes talking about the 2020 iPad Pro. And I will say, even though it is going to be updated in just a couple of weeks at Apple's March event, it you may still want to hold off on buying one. Here's apparently how the upgrade cycle this year is going to work. There will be a new model with a triple camera setup and some new augmented reality 3D laser time of flight sensing technology on it. It's also going to have a faster processor, but everything else is essentially going to be the same. Maybe a new smart keyboard will be shipping alongside it, but it's not going to be a huge upgrade unless you care about three cameras, which is like a story for another day because it seems so pointless. And later in 2020, Apple is said to be bringing five 
5G support to it as well as a faster A14 or A14X processor. So really it sounds like one big upgrade being split apart into two smaller upgrades. I mean, you could argue the triple camera setup could be bigger than 5G, but depending on your usage, 5G versus the triple camera could be bigger. It's just like a weird layout of updates and I could see Apple doing it well because of what's happened in the past. Now Apple actually has done this once before. Do you remember the iPad 3? It was the first iPad with a retina display. I still remember seeing the ads for it and being like, wow, this is actually awesome. It still had the 30 pin connector. Now you have to be a real Apple fan to remember this. You guys had like the iPhone 4, 3GS, 3G, old iPod touch. Yeah, the super wonky, very unreliable 30 pin connector. But just a few months later, Apple actually changed it out with a lightning connector and I believe a faster processor again and then called it the iPad 4, even though essentially everything else was the same. And people were obviously upset about that because they just bought a new iPad and then a new one came out six months later. Apple generally stays away from that strategy, but it does seem like the same thing could sort of happen here again, just because the 5G technology isn't ready now, but the main iPad Pro upgrade is ready now, but some bigger stuff is coming later down the road. It is important to note though, that while the iPad Pro will be available quite soon, the production ramp up is said to be slow due to Apple's global production issues right now. So it'll be available like as planned initially, but the quantity and the ease of getting to that product may be a bit more challenging than any other year. So let me know your thoughts on this down below. Are you gonna be picking up the new iPad Pro? Is it the update, the triple camera setup and the faster processor right now worth it for you? Uh, let me know down below. For me though, the most exciting bit of news was actual material dates for not only when the iPhone 9 is releasing it to everybody, but also when Apple is said to be holding the March event. Now, traditionally, they've always held it in the middle to the later half of March, and this year, they're said to be following that same trend. According to iPhone Ticker, which is an Apple news blog based out of Germany, they have some inside sources that have told them that Apple will be for sure holding events in the later half of March, with the likely date being the very last day of the month. I am not making this one up. Tuesday, March 31st, 2020, the very first Apple event of a new decade is said to be taking place then. Now it could also be on Monday or potentially later in the week, but the sources seem pretty confident that a March event is happening. And think about all the rumors, the iPhone 9, the new iPad Pro, uh, the AirTag, Apple Tiles Tracker, new 13 inch MacBook Pro, more on that one in just a second, potentially a new iMac, uh, new Apple TV. Like there's some big products here. Oh, and also the red Apple Watch. I almost forgot about that one. There is certainly enough here for a March event. And for a new iPhone, Apple's never launched like a new major iPhone without an event that just seems right. Speaking of that new iPhone 9, while the event is taking place on March 31st, you'll actually be able to get your hands on that iPhone later that same week. Yeah, it's not gonna be the most exciting iPhone out there, but for non people like us that are like super into getting the new iPhone every year, this is gonna be the perfect upgrade because it's cheap. It's gonna have the A13 processor, which is crazy fast. And it's probably gonna have amazing battery life because of that processor as well. I'm actually most interested to see the battery life on this phone because the A13 has done wonders on both the iPhone 11 and 11 Pro series. The same site is claiming Friday, April 3rd, 2020 is gonna be when you get your hands on this lower cost iPhone, which by the way, great news here. We were hearing 399 is speculative, like that would make sense. It was what the original low cost iPhone SE came in at. And now Fast Company with a very, very good track record is coming in telling us that 399 is what they've been hearing as well. So 400 bucks for an A13 processor. Yes, outdated screen, 4.7 inch LCD. Yeah, it's got a touch ID sensor and no face ID, three gigabytes of RAM. And it's gonna probably, you know, be the phone for most people that don't wanna spend a lot of money. I still think the iPhone 11 is the best phone for most people, but for $300 less than the iPhone 11, you're getting the same processor for $300 less. You know, that's, that's a really good deal right there. I mentioned that Apple will be also upgrading the 13 inch MacBook Pro earlier. And while it's likely at this event, we still don't know for sure, although some harder leaks surfaced on Twitter the other day. The same user who discovered a certain graphics card that Apple was testing before the 16 inch MacBook Pro was announced that eventually ended up happening has also found some new details that show that the peak performance gains for the 13 inch MacBook Pro could be amazing. We're looking at 30% better graphics improvements, which that alone is like, okay, that's pretty sweet. With the CPU gaining at 12% on top of that, potentially up to two terabytes of storage too. This machine is gonna be great for anybody that wants the 16 inch, but finds it a bit too large, or just wants something a bit more low key than Apple's top of the line at MacBook Pro. And obviously, for a lower price. The 16 inch MacBook Pro starts at $2,400 and that is honestly out of a lot of people's budgets. Now there's speculation that this could be a 14 inch model just as Apple, you know, 
shrunk down the bezels on the 15 inch model, then turned it into a 16 inch screen. Maybe we could say the same thing on the 13 inch, but nobody's sure yet. So take that with a big grain of salt because nobody said that's happening. So we got some big news all the way around. It does seem that while Apple is facing some intermittent production delays on a lot of their products, especially the iPhone, it is not gonna impact the presence of this March event. So I'm looking forward to it. I'll see you guys on the 31st. And obviously as we get closer to the event, more and more things tend to leak out. And I'll tell you when Apple has confirmed it by sending out invites. That's all for right now. Drop a like if you enjoyed it. Hit subscribe for more and I'll catch all of you in my next video. And uh, you know, great, we got a March event this year. Let's go.